Uh, I'll be blunt with you. The bank has been, you know, trying to pry away from certain, you know, uh, clients where they're kind of out there in the media and uh, very strong opinionated. I'm embarrassed. I was turned down for a mortgage last week by the Royal Bank. That's pretty embarrassing. I'm almost 50 years old. I've been a Royal Bank customer for 22 years. What's wrong with me? Except I wasn't rejected because I'm a failure. In fact, the Royal Bank mortgage officer who reviewed my application in detail said it was very strong. But he's just a regional banker in Calgary. He said the decision to kill it was made at the Royal Bank's Toronto head office. He told me my mortgage application was canceled because Rebel News has the wrong opinions. See, Rebel News and I were applying for a commercial mortgage to buy an office building, our own place, from which we could never be canceled or deplatformed. I agreed to put my life savings in as a down payment and to get my personal guarantee on the mortgage. The banker was impressed and said he approved of the deal. But the Toronto head office overruled him because of our conservative views. I'm still embarrassed. Being rejected makes you feel powerless and being rejected for inappropriate reasons feels deeply unfair. I don't think people would believe me. They'd probably think I was just making excuses except for one thing. I have proof from that Calgary banker. He's told me what the bank was doing to me and why. So please give me a few moments. I want to show you how cancel culture has come to Canadian banks. If Justin Trudeau's liberals don't like you, one day you might have your banking cut off too. But also stick around because I want to tell you how I intend to get that office building, even though Trudeau and the Royal Bank are trying to kill it. I have an idea that I think could work. I think you'll love it, actually. But first, here's my proof that it was political. Here's the mortgage officer I dealt with at the Royal Bank's Calgary branch. I asked him if there was any financial weakness in the Rebel News mortgage application or my personal guarantee. And here's what he told me. So if, if you had your way, this thing would be a green light, but you're just yes. waiting on the political guy. Yes. If I had my way, yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. Me and Joe, uh, we should be fine. Just very comfortable given the financials that you have. Strong right. cash flows, no debt, basically. And the fact that, you know, you're willing to put your skin in the game, kind of. But even though our application was strong, we're debt-free thanks to our viewers. This Calgary banker said the head office in Toronto wanted to review it for politics and because of our strong opinions about Trudeau, the Royal Bank decided to block us. Yeah, it's just about the nature of the business altogether because uh, uh, the bank has been, uh, I'll be blunt with you, the bank has been you know, trying to pry away from certain you know, uh, clients where they're kind of out there in the media and uh, very strong opinionated, you know, uh, which is your business in a way. So we're just uh, clearing some internal hurdles to make sure that uh, the bank is okay to uh, kind of uh, onboard you as a client internally. Spoiler alert, we did not clear those hurdles, even though I've done all of my personal banking at that same Royal Bank branch for decades. It's very rare for me to record a phone call, but I had a feeling that call would be the only time he would tell me what was really happening, that the Royal Bank was making a blacklist of conservatives. I don't want to use that banker's name, even though the Royal Bank will obviously know who he is. And if they're anything like Trudeau, they might punish him. I promise if they do that, I'll offer him a free lawyer. And if they fire him, I'll do my best to find him a new job. He's a whistleblower. He told me what's really going on in the bank. Somebody really ought to investigate that, by the way. So the Royal Bank canceled our mortgage application because of our strong opinions. But that's not quite right, is it? Because the Royal Bank supports plenty of people with strong opinions. Here's the Royal Bank donating more than $100,000 to that extremist, David Suzuki. You know, the one who threatened to blow up pipelines? That's a strong opinion. And here's a half million dollar gift from the Royal Bank to the Tides Foundation to help block the Northern Gateway Pipeline. That's a strong opinion. The problem with our Rebel News opinions isn't that they're strong. It's that we disagree with the Royal Bank and their favorite politician, Justin Trudeau. There's a revolving door between the Royal Bank and the Liberal Party, you know? John McCallum, who was fired in disgrace as Trudeau's ambassador to China, he was a senior Royal Bank executive. Here's Trudeau stuffing the Senate with another Royal Bankster. Here they are, 
making a large donation to the World Wildlife Fund Canada to promote the carbon tax back when they were run by Trudeau's henchman, Gerald Butts. So yeah, the Royal Bank is fine with strong opinions, just not conservative ones. Western Canadians have seen this story before. Toronto banks killing Calgary businesses, even though the Calgary branch really wanted this mortgage. This was a political assassination. The Royal Bank's Calgary branch went through our mortgage application with a fine tooth comb. I showed them everything. All of our Rebel News financial statements going back years. My own personal finances, because I agreed to personally guarantee the mortgage. We showed them all the details about the building. We had an independent appraisal done. We even sent over environmental reports and structural inspections. The Calgary bankers were so impressed that they hopped on a Zoom call with me and they started with a joke. They said our application was so strong, they wanted to give Rebel News mortgages for two buildings, not just one. Here's an email they sent me right after that Zoom call. I blacked out some private details, but you can see that not only did they agree to the mortgage, but they actually wanted to offer us a huge line of credit too. I didn't ask for a line of credit, but they really wanted our business. It sounds like on the financing side, we're, we're set. It's just this political question you guys are still weighing, right? Yep, yep, correct. I was excited. This building was supposed to be my big New Year's announcement for 2022. I wanted to tell you about our new office, not just for us at Rebel News, but for all conservatives sick of being deplatformed and canceled, a permanent, uncancelable office building. It would be a co-working office, you know what I mean by that? For other conservative journalists and other political activists on the right, for campaigners, the kind of place that the left has. Stay around for a moment. I want to tell you more about the plans for that building because I'm still going to go ahead with it, with your help. <laughs> I'm not going to let the Royal Bank or Trudeau kill it. Calgary has a 30% office vacancy rate right now. And, and that means that I don't think we're ever going to have such a great opportunity to buy a building like this of our own at an affordable price. I think we've got to do it now. But just for a moment, let me tell you a little bit more about what happened at the Royal Bank because it's going it's to, you're not going to believe it. After that Zoom call, the Calgary bankers said something to me that scared me. They said they needed Toronto's permission, which is weird because... The Calgary office is allowed to approve mortgages of up to $10 million on their own. The Calgary bankers promised they'd do their best to fight this from within the inside of the bank, but they had no chance. I offered to meet with the Toronto bankers, but Toronto refused to even talk with me. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, my hands are tied as well. I, I tried defending it. Uh, we went back and forth, but uh, that was their decision. It's been another week, and I have not heard back from them. I, I really don't think I ever will. <laughs> I guess some things never change. Don't trust the Royal Bank. If you're a conservative or a Westerner, if you believe in free speech, they will hate you as they hate me. I'm embarrassed by all this, but do you really think I'm going to lay down and die? To heck with them. Let me tell you my idea for this building. I refuse to let some Trudeau bank stop it. So I told you it was going to be the Rebel News office, which is true. We've got six journalists out there in Calgary right now, and we're growing out there. But we don't need a whole office building just for them. Here's the idea. We're also inviting other like-minded conservative and democracy groups to work out of this office building too. I've spent the last few months calling up fellow travelers and telling them about the idea, and everyone's pretty excited. For example, our friends at True North have agreed to put their Calgary office staff in the building too. I've talked to five groups that are actively considering it. You've heard of most of them. It's going to be amazing. I imagine a place not just for established groups though, but for startups like a Silicon Valley incubator, even for individual conservative activists to have a desk and wireless internet and, and a mailing address and things to get started. We'd each have our own offices, but there would be a common area, a lounge and a cafeteria we'd all share, and there would be a big boardroom that any of us could book, and, and also other really useful rooms like a YouTube studio and a podcasting studio that anyone in the building could use. It's like a co-working area, but just for people who work in freedom-oriented politics and media and organizing, and the building is pretty big. It's more than 15,000 square feet. Now, some space is already rented out, which helps cover the costs, but it gives us room to expand in the future. So there's going to be a lot of space for public gatherings. 
It's going to be an uncancelable place for speakers, for events, for town hall meetings, for book launches, even for conferences. It is undeplatformable. And that's why the bank killed it. I've been toying with different names for this building, like the Freedom Factory or the Center for Democratic Unity. That's actually growing on me. I know it sounds a bit lefty, but I think it works. Everyone there is working to make our democracy better. And unity. Well, imagine all these groups that are splintered right now, working under the same roof. There's a lot of splitism in conservative politics. So many little parties, so much division. How about some common purpose? Just seeing each other and talking with each other every day in the common areas or at events, I think that's going to be amazing. I've already started talking to conservative leaders and thinkers about a monthly speaker's events right there. And I promise I'll invite you. That's the whole point of this place, a meeting place. The left has a ton of these buildings, by the way. I actually stumbled into one of them by accident in Toronto. Someone invited me to a media conference there back in 2015. Obviously, it was a mistake to invite me. I, I couldn't believe where I found myself. Every Tides Foundation, Soros Foundation leftist was hanging out there. Free Wi-Fi, a desk, software, other services. For some reason, they gave everyone free oat milk, which is a leftist thing, I guess. But mainly, they were building a sense of community and camaraderie. It was more than just an office building. It was a team. They learned from each other. They supported each other. They worked with each other. And they were winning. We don't, we don't have anything like that on our side. And I think it's time we did. It's what the Manning Center tried to do years ago, but didn't accomplish. We will make rent affordable for these like-minded tenants. The idea is to create a real hub of activity. It's about building a network. The left gets that. That's why this office building is so important. I told the bank I was gonna put in my life savings as a down payment on the building, and I'd guarantee the mortgage personally. And with Rebel News, I'm all in. You heard the bank though. They were impressed by that. You have a strong right. cash flow, no debt, basically. And the fact that, you know, you're willing to put your skin in the game. The Calgary bankers were willing to lend me more than $2 million before Toronto killed it. So if someone watching this video is in a position to replace the Royal Bank's mortgage, or even just part of it, please let me know. If you're a real estate lender or investor who doesn't discriminate against conservatives, I'll show you the mortgage application that I gave to the Royal Bank. Please send me an email to Ezra at rebelnews.com if you're in a position to lend us the money secured against the building and if you think a mortgage rate of 5% is a good rate of return. I know what other media companies would do in this situation. They would ask for a bailout from Trudeau, but we'd have to give up our strong opinions and be obedient to him. We'll never do that. So maybe a miracle will happen. Maybe an angel investor will give us the mortgage that the Royal Bank won't. But I'm not counting on that. So let's see if we can do this ourselves. Many hands make light work. Let's crowdfund this. A permanent home for Rebel News, but also for other conservative groups. Brick by brick, we'll buy this place. And instead of owing money to the bank, we'll own it outright. And if we do, we can make it available to whomever we choose, not to whomever Trudeau or his bankers choose. Instead of having a liability, let's have an asset and use it to build our movement. I am completely committed. I know our team is. I know other conservative groups are excited about this. Will you help us, please? Or will you let Trudeau and his friends at the Royal Bank blacklist us? If you want to defy Trudeau and the Royal Bank, please go to buy the building. And if you help me, I promise you we will make that building a fortress from which we will fight for freedom every day. Please go to buythebuilding.ca and chip in whatever you can. We need a lot of help, more than we've ever needed before. But it can be fun too. If you can help us with a $250 donation, we'll have a brick with your name and a short message from you on it. So we'll see that every day as we pass by. If you donate $1,000, We'll give you a brick plus engrave your name on a brass plaque that will hang on the boardroom wall. And if you can afford to chip in $5,000, we will put your name on a cornerstone of this office. <laughs> and if you're a guardian angel who has the ability to help us beyond our expectations, 
if you are in a position to donate $50,000, we will officially name a key room in your honor, like the boardroom or the YouTube studio or the podcasting studio. The pandemic and the lockdowns have shown the value of Rebel News. We've never done more important journalism. Our motto, telling the other side of the story, has never been more relevant. We now have 52 staff across the company, but we need an office in Calgary. This building isn't just for us. That's why I like the name Center for Democratic Unity. This building will be a home for the entire movement. Please go to buythebuilding.ca and help us out. I wanted to buy an uncancelable building, but then the Royal Bank canceled it. We can't let them have the last word on that. Please go to buythebuilding.ca. Thank you. The Royal Bank canceled our commercial mortgage application because we criticized Justin Trudeau. They told us that. That's outrageous and it proves the need for an office that we own and make available to other conservatives too. Please help us if you can at buythebuilding.ca. Thank you.